Hi YouTube, Neil here with Facelift Interiors and welcome back to our channel. Christmas edition. All right. In this week's video, we're going to be showing you how to reupholster a curved chair or how we call it over here. We call it a swivel chair. So it's on a swivel base and it swivels. So as always, there's going to be lots of tips and tricks in this video. This one's going to be about how to upholster a drastic curve on a curved sofa or a curved chair. Also, this chair was, um, how do we say? It basically needed a lot of strengthening. Let's just say that the manufacturer that already made this chair or manufactured this chair had some corners, you know, there's corners they, they take out. So in this video, we're gonna show you how to strengthen just making a higher quality product and just generally being bloody awesome. So as always, if you like upholstery tips and tricks, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell so you can see us every Sunday. Also, don't forget to give us a like, drop us a comment as well. It's lovely hearing from you. Without further ado, this is how your upholster a curved so Sofa or chair action. So Ole. upon inspection inside back very very soft outside back nothing even there empty there's no lining there's no lining fabric. I don't want to say too much because it's a friend of ours that we're doing this for, but just what you'd expect from this name on this platform. So we'll start taking this apart. Let's have a look. So what I'm doing now guys is I'm checking it out, seeing what I could do to make it better. Right, the seat, the seat's okay. I'm not gonna do too much with the seat, but the back, the webs are really loose. There's no protection over the top of the web. So what I'm gonna do is run a Hessian lining all the way round. Also, the outside back hasn't got a lining on it either, so I'm gonna have to put a lining on that. As you can see on the back, there's no lining fabric, so it's very soft. I'm gonna put a back lining on to make it stronger, but I can only take it to about here because I need to get into here, shoot off the seat and the inside back before I pull the outside back down. Frame wise, it's pretty much all made out of a chipboard, sterling board. Exclusively made out of chipboard. So that's the difference between high street sofas and coming to us. Even if it is a high street sofa like this one is, I'm gonna upgrade it. So I'm gonna tighten all the webs, put a hessian lining on top. I might even do a hessian lining on the seat as well, just to turn it into a semi-quality bit of furniture. These high street makes, it's not made to last. So I'm gonna make it last a bit longer with um, what I'm gonna do. So what we're doing is putting a lining, a hessian, on the inside back to protect it. And we've also put new webs on because the other ones are a bit weak. So we put a load of new ones on. So what I'm doing here is I've cut one bit off and now I'm putting another bit on because one straight bit of hessian won't go all the way around this curve. Hence why you have to have joins in it. So all I'm doing here is putting a separate piece in so I get all the way around the curve. Now, once I've finished, I cut off all the excess hessian. Voila. Now I'm pulling the old foam back over and then I'll glue the foam down as well. So what we did is we put new, well, extra webs on because the old ones are really soft. So instead of trying to tighten them, I just put new ones in in between them. And then we've put a hessian layer over the top to protect the foam from the webs. So now I'm just gonna glue the back back on. Then uh, we're gonna start putting a lining fabric around the back. So we're gonna put a lining fabric down to about here so I can still get in and staple the seat off. Right, guys, so what I'm gonna show you now, I'm gonna make an outside back lining because this is quite tricky, it's quite curved. What I'm doing is I'm just stapling this on Temporary, as you can see, I'm stapling at a slight angle so they come out nice and easy. Yeah. 
I'm going to get my chalk and run it round. That's where I want my joint to be. And this piece I can chalk as well. I just need to put plus four inches there. I'm going to do the same here. Now when you're doing a shape like this where it's a different size to the top than it is to the bottom, as you come around you can staple it straight here but as you start to turn it, it's going to go up. So you need to bear that in mind. So now we can take this off. Right guys, as you can see, we are putting Dacron the whole way around. Didn't have any on before. Now it is going to have lots, lots and lots of Dacron. And I can't stick it all the way down because of the way this has been made. So the way this has been made, the outside back and the inside back are sewn on as one piece. Can't really change that. So this is our inside back and our outside back and it was all sewn as one piece. So what I've done is I've started on picking here and here so what I'll do is I will take the inside back, so it's three panels. What I'll do is I'll take them all apart. So I'll take the inside back three panels apart and put them together. And then I'll do the outside back, put them three bits together. Then I will cut them out of the fabric and then I'll basically sew one, two, three up together. And then one, two, three up together. And then I'll sew, you see the seams here, they line up. So you just zip it all the way along. So basically this is just the, the cutting part of the job. So what we're doing is just unstitching the, job, the seam. So what I've done on here also, I've got to say, mark top, outside, back, right, and then the panel that goes opposite is going to say top, inside, back, right. It's just so we know where each bit goes, we don't get muddled up. So I'm just going to flatten out these seams a little bit, just where they've been so pressed for so long. So this is a good way to get your seams flattened down, just get the old iron out. Tear that lining off. You can see here that they've both got the same cut, so it looks like we're gonna have to make cuts ourselves on the frame. So now we're just gonna and we're now gonna mark these top, inside, back, left, inside, back, right. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my soft tape measure to find the exact middle of the frame because there is a seam join in the middle of the fabric. So that is what I'm doing here. I'm going to staple that off. Then from the middle, I'm going to work my way around, making sure the selvage is all down in the same place, make sure it sits nicely and start working my way around and stapling towards the end. Now I'm going through to the back, lifting the Dacron and the back line in, getting into the back and stapling the seat or the black platform of the seat onto the rails. Apologies here, I think my cable was caught around my camera. What I'm doing here is I'm just cutting up to the wood and then stapling around onto the wood because the outside back and inside back is gonna come over that. Now I'm stapling my platform onto the rail all the way round, nice and tight. Now I've got my inside back, outside back. I'm going to lay it on, try and find the centre. Now I'm pushing my selvages all the way down. It's so important that your selvages are all the same way. What I did there is I just pulled the seam as tight as I could, stapled one in. Now I've pulled the inside back down. Now I'm working the bottom of the inside back around, pulling all of the looseness out of the fabric. As you can see here, I'm working my way up. So what I'm probably gonna do now is start tacking off this outside back, start working my way around, and then we finish off at the front, stapling all the front off. And obviously before, earlier on in the video, this, this back didn't have a lining fabric on it. But now, ta -da 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 -da, it does.
So let's get our fabric down. We are stapling off our lining fabric, which is basically our strengthening fabric. And now, Now we can start stapling off our outside back. So when you're doing something like this, it's important to work your way around. As you can see, I've got a lot of bagginess here gathering. But once that goes that way and this comes down that way, that's gonna be sorted. So what I'm doing here is I'm stapling off my lining fabric onto the end rail first. So we get a nice strong fix, cutting off the excess, turning it under and stapling it on the bottom. Then so we're pulling our seam nice and tight, stapling that off. Then we start pulling our inside back round. That is where my seam's gonna finish. So, so the rest of this outside back, I'm just gonna run my hand up and get all the bagginess at the front. I've done the same with the other side. All the way up. Nice and tight. Tight like a tiger. Now we have this little conundrum. So it's gonna be a facing that covers that. So what I'm gonna do is snip into here. staple in there All right, a little bit more of a snip oh so I'm gonna do is just work the rest of this fabric round on the inside back so now we're working the inside back fabric round here I'm just fixing on the facings we previously done a video on how to do facings. We will leave it in the link above. Now when doing a round bottom like this, like most other upholstery projects, it's worth doing in stages. So we've got two here at the top, two at the bottom now. Now we're gonna do two at the sides. So what I do is I fold under, then I release, release back towards me till I've got enough. And you cut one side, then go over to the opposite side. Now I'm gonna start working my way around because we've got most of our anchor points sorted. Now, we just got to put the bottom on, the swivel. Here's the finished product. Spinning very nice. Thanks for watching, guys.